YT Dan Duel Links is brought to you by Dank Duelists Like You. Become a YouTube member to never miss. What's going on my boys? YT Dan back again with another Duel Links video. And today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm stuck in the house, you're stuck in the house, and there's nothing better to do but get in there with some Duel Links. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably hopped on the ladder and experienced a shift in what the meta has been over the last month. And if you come to Duel Links Meta's website and you take a look at this tier list, of course it's very accurate to what you're gonna see on ranked PVP, but what you actually don't see here on this tier list are the secret meta. The secret meta is the decks that are played at a very high rate in ranked PVP. You know, other decks that you, like for example, back when we, a lot of people played Six Samurai, you would see a lot of you bells, but you bell was not a ranked deck. So because of that, you know, you have to be prepared for you bell, but also be prepared for the top tier decks. Same thing in this uh, scenario where I'm gonna talk more about those decks that are lurking in the shadows. So if you guys want to hear more about rogue style decks and more about secret meta decks that are running around in ranked PvP, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links content whenever it's uploaded. So let's just jump right into the video. So two of the key indicators on things you wanna look at to see those top decks is honestly, what are the top monsters being used in this meta right now? Now, as you can see, a lot of people are using Spear Karibo, a lot of people are using Kite Roid, and a lot of people are using Raiden, the Hand of the Light Sworn. Now, Raiden, Hand of the Light Sworn is an easy, splashable card that you can run in pretty much anything, but honestly, right in the hand of the Light Sworn is one of the strongest, most prolific cards inside of the Light Sworn deck. Now, as we go through this, you don't even see any Judgment Dragons or anything like that used in this top cut of cards. I do not see a Judgment Dragon anywhere. But what you do see is Lumina and you see Raiden. Lumina and Raiden is the ultimate combo that will get you into one of the most used extra deck monsters, which coming in at number four, Michael the Arc Life Swarm. So clearly right now, Life Swarms are doing really good. The honest thing about Life Swarms is it's insanely fast, it's super powerful, because in Life Swarms they possess really strong spell cards, as you can see, Top use spell charge of the light brigade. Charge of the light brigade lets you search your deck for any level four light swarm monster. And then also you can follow up with solar charge to go ahead and draw cards through your deck. So you can mill through your deck, draw through your deck, move extremely fast to these light swarm plays. And the reason why I might not see as many plays in Duel Links Metas tournament versus ranked PVP is honestly because Duel Links Metas Tournament provides side decking. Ranked duels does not provide side decking, so it's really easy to catch someone off guard with a Light Sworn deck that is extremely powerful, that can explode in one turn, and honestly, you don't even have to play Light Sworn to get the full benefit. You can play a Light Sworn engine, run a combination of both Light Sworn monsters with Shirinui, which also share this top cut. Now, coming up as another powerful deck that I think is really strong that people are playing in abundance right now, which is really ridiculous and it's a little annoying, is Lunar Lights. Now, Lunar Lights is an incredible deck. Don't get me wrong. There's lots of true benefits to Lunar Lights. They have lots of recursion. Um, you can quickly get out an OTK. And honestly, Lunar Lights is one of the most powerful things you can run out here. I'm sure it's not ranking high in the tournaments for this reason only is because Lunar Lights are easily outed if they pretty much blow their entire hand or they expose that they are Lunar Lights. When you know you're playing against Lunar Lights, you can easily counter against them. But unfortunately, Lunar Lights is the perfect deck to catch you off guard and win because they went second. Lunar Lights have the ability to cut your monster's attack to zero. And then if you go ahead and follow up with 
Lunar Light Cat Dancer, you can attack into a monster multiple times with that monster's attack points being at zero and they'll basically take 4,800 damage directly and that's the end of the game. Up right here within the top 20 cards is Cyber Dragon OTK. Lots of people are still running Cyber Style Cyber Dragon OTK. And honestly, it, I would say it's primarily because of this trap, which is within the top 10 traps used, uh, Cybernetic Overflow. Cybernetic Overflow is one of the most powerful traps in this game right now. You know, there, of course, Floodgate is definitely a heavily used trap. You know, Treacherous Trap, Fiendish Chain, all good trap cards all good single use trap cards but within an archetype this card is one of the most powerful cards it says banish cyber dragons with different names from your hand face up on the field and or the graveyard that means that this card at any moment could take everything from your opponent also this card does not target so this card can literally nuke the board and then add more stuff to you once this card is, uh, if it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard. So this card, literally, there's no downside to run it except for you need to run it in Cyber Dragons. So I think that this particular card really uh, leans heavily into making Cyber Dragons so good, opening your opponent up so that they're forced to lose to Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. And what's irritating about Chimera Tech Rampage is he's only 2100 attack, but because he's 2100 attack, he can definitely um, take a game very quickly, but you have to look at this, which is the main reason why this deck might not be successful. Many people are playing Kiteroid, many people are playing Karibo, so much so that it is maintaining the top three slots. So just because these cards are being played and just because Cybernetic uh, Rampage, uh, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon is in the meta, actually being used in the meta, um, does not necessarily mean that it's gonna hit COG, but it definitely means that it can hit you. And it's something that you have to be prepared for, which if you're running a rogue style deck, Karibo, Kiteroid, definitely two choices that you can't go wrong with. So another deck that I do wanna talk about that's really prominent in the meta, um, that's also just out and about inside of just rankings in general, uh, is Blackwing. Now Blackwing is is a card that's, it, or, or, or an archetype that, you know, is, is seeing a lot of play in tournament style gameplay, um, as in, you know, playing in Duel Links Meta's weekly tournaments. But when it comes to just ranked PVP, you know, Blackwing is the deck that just kind of shows up, claps you, disappears. I don't really see too many Blackwing decks being played. As you're looking in these frequently used cards, you don't see any uh, Blackwing cards within the top cut. You're just literally seeing more Blue Eyes, more Shiro Nui, some Invoke stuff, even Cyber Dragon, but you're not really seeing um, too many Blackwing cards in the top cut. Blackwing cards are starting to come in a little bit lower after um, the top 20 cards, which means that this deck is being played. It's around. Um, it definitely can clap. It definitely can steal wins. And it is a very strong deck, but its weakness is same as Lunar Lights. If it plays out its entire hand, plays out its entire board, you know, tries to attack you and fails, then they are susceptible to um, destruction, uh, targeting, and literally everything and anything else. So Black Wings are pretty weak on turn three. Um, you know, if if you basically survive their onslaught. Well, coming up on the second to the last deck that I'm gonna talk about today is Super Heavy Samurai. Now, Super Heavy Samurai is one of those decks that it's like, man, you hate you hate to see it, honestly. <laughs> when you're playing in Duel Links and you're trying to rank up, someone pops up with Super Heavy Samurai. You know, it's not necessarily Super Heavy Samurai the entire combination that kills you. What kills you in Super Heavy Samurai is their little, uh, the little source card um, that they use to search out cards and acquire more cards and basically cut your monster's attack to zero and stall for a turn. Now that card isn't represented here at all, but if you look 
into the extra deck and you see the type cards represented, you do see some super heavy samurai cards, meaning someone out here is playing that deck. Again, it's closer to the bottom. It's very, 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 very infrequent, but this deck does show up frequent enough to break your KOG streak. So Super Heavy Samurai is a deck that you should constantly be looking out for, which again, if you look at the top three most used cards, you see Karibo and Kite Roy. Meaning if you're afraid of Super Heavy Samurai, you run Kite Roy. But if you're afraid of, um, I don't know, Cyber Dragon, if you're afraid of um, uh, Lunar Lights, Karibo could be um, a better option because changing the monster to defense and then retaliating to destroy the monsters either by battle or card effects definitely really helps out a lot. Um, Kite Roy pretty much will just negate damage, but Karibo gives you control over the board rather than control over damage. So, you know, in my personal opinion, I do like to use Karibo a lot more when I can, but if I'm running a deck that I'm just stalling for time, Kite Roy is also the better option. And coming in for the final deck, the final deck that I'm gonna talk about here, you don't really see it here at all um, inside of, of this top 10 uh, or top uh, 50 most used cards. It's definitely not anywhere to be seen here, but there is one card that I do see here in the extra deck that makes me aware that this deck is around in some way, shape or form. And don't get me wrong, I have been clapped and tilted by this deck. It is Ojama King Cyberstein. Now, Ojama King Cyberstein is a deck that everyone should know. If you're just now starting off Duel Links or you've recently come into the game, St Ojama Cyberstein is ridiculous. Basically, on the first turn, um, if you're lucky enough to go first, you can boost your life points to get to over 5,000. You can pay the life points down and special summon Ojama King. And when you drop Ojama King on your opponent, typically people like to use life cost zero and so they can summon a second monster to follow up. And most of the time is Dark Calvary. So now they have a negate on the field and three of your spell, uh, three of your monster zones are now blocked. Three monster zones are blocked and now you can't do anything in terms of responding with a monster. And since most of the decks, as you're looking at these decks, all need to summon monsters so that they can win the game, it's over when they summon goddamn Ojama King. So that's my final deck, my boys. And I think that that's gonna pretty much wrap up the video here. Let me know about the secret decks that are lurking within rank PVP. I want to know you guys' opinion. Just to wrap it up, of course you can use Duel Links Meta's website as a reference. It's definitely one of the best tools out there but you need to make sure that you're checking out the ranked duels most popularly used cards to understand what those random decks that are running inside of the secret meta so that you can be successful on your KOG rank up. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one. So as always, keep it dang.